the set over there when I was short played. So it's good to be back. Welcome back. Our juggernaut of Fantastic Sundance Films carries on. We, I believe, define such staggering news as you are going to go blind as a tragedy collectively, and yet there is a journey that is taken by that person who has to face that diagnosis and make a way through life. Pete Middleton and James Spinney are the co-directors of a film that tackles a real life story. Taken from audio cassettes, A Journey, A Diary, the film is one that we're very excited to have here. It's called Notes on Blindness. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice thanks to for having you us. here. Sundance. It's nice to be back. Indeed. Yeah. Very good. I suppose talk first, if you would, about these these audio cassettes. John Hull obviously was a, a an accomplished person. He was a, an academic and intellectual. Talk about learning of these audio tapes and and saying we can make a film, we can make a multimedia experience out of this staggering journey. Yeah. So um, we were. About five years ago, we were working on another unrelated film, and we were researching different testimonies of blindness. And we came across a book called Touching the Rock, which reads like a diary. Um, and we went to interview John and his wife, Marilyn. Um, and they mentioned that the, um, that the diaries, that the audio tapes upon which this, this book was based were still in existence. Um, now, John had started recording this audio diary as he became totally blind in 1983. And across the next three years, he recorded 16 hours of audio, which um, analyzed every aspect of blindness really analyzed what it was doing to his, to his dreaming life, to his memories, um, to his sense of identity. Um, and across this period it, it goes from being an account of grief and loss to being one of transformation, rebirth and renewal. And by the end of this period John has actually come to conceive of blindness as, as a, he calls it a paradoxical gift around which he kind of redefines his life. I can't imagine. I suppose most of us cannot imagine that being said. Once you started listening, taking part in what was surely initially a very emotional journey. Was there a time for either of you when it, it was difficult to balance the emotion with, we must do this, we must make this art, we must make something found art new out of these diaries? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was as soon as we, we heard the tapes, um, we kind of we got to know John over the course of six months before he kind of sent us this this box of cassettes, and we remember very fondly the time when we kind of first put it on a tape recorder and, and heard the heard his voice come through. And um, as, as James hinted at, they, they really are quite a it's quite a profound testimony um, of grief and loss, and, and then ultimately one of sort of rebirth and, and renewal. And and it's it's very hard not to be drawn into that. And as filmmakers, it was it was something incredibly compelling. We saw that as a as a challenge really to take that material and 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 work it into a film and, and, and the accompanying VR project that, that's here, premiering here uh, this week. It occurs to me that there's a, a metaphor in what is a chronicling of loss, and yet what you've created, not just in, in terms of a film, but a multimedia experience, is creating something entirely new out of that loss, and a, and a beautiful metaphor indeed in that sense. Talk about the, the process of the narrative and of visualizing, of all crazy things, this particular story. Yeah, well, as you say, um, for all the, the, the John Starries go into what he's losing in his sighted life and the, and the aspects of that that he's mourning, for all of that, there is also this sense of discovery and what he discovers um, in this blind identity that he finds. Um, and that's very much the story that's told um, in the feature film. Um, and we, were, we started working with this, um, with this diary material, but we also were interviewing John and Marilyn over the past five years. And those interviews kind of um, form, I suppose, another, another tier of narration for the film. So as well as being in the kind of present tense of the diaries of John recording them alone with his cassette recorder in 1983, we also moved to kind of that more present day tier with John and Marilyn reflecting on it from a distance of 30 years. And that really was very profound because John um, actually became blind um, shortly after he and his wife Marilyn um, were married. And in fact, he had the final failed operation um, which failed to save his sight in the same week that, uh, that their first child was born. Wow. So as well as being a story of, of adaptation to blindness, it's also kind of a, a deeply personal story about family. And, um, and really, I think that's, that's what developed over the course of the five years of work on the project, is this really became very much a love story of John and Marilyn. And, and having them reflecting on it from a distance of 30 years was, was really meaningful. But the, um, 
the way to tell that story um, was something that you know, took several years to develop and because we knew that we had this extraordinary audio testimony in these original diary recordings um, and we were very excited by these interviews that we were doing but the challenge of how to represent blindness on screen was, um, was, was a big question for the project and what we settled on was the idea that all of the voices in the film would be this, from this original documentary audio so all of the voices would be um, the voices of John, his wife and, the, and their children um, and in fact around the same period they were keeping these remarkable home recordings much as you would home movies they set up tape recorders around the house so we kind of have almost documentary actuality from the period of the family. Um, so all the voices are those original voices, but on screen, John, Marilyn, and the children are all played by actors. Um, and so they're actually lip-syncing along to this original documentary audio. Um, and that really liberated the scope of the film to be able to explore um, the dreams and the memories that John's describing. Um, John still actually dreams visually, even after he's been blind for several years. Um, and he has these kind of cinematic dreams of his children being swept away from him by crashing waves or, or seeing his, his youngest daughter for the first time only to kind of be separated from right. her. So, um, so using actors to kind of to portray them on screen, but whilst rooted in this original documentary audio, allowed us to explore this kind of rich internal journey that he goes on. Seems like a wonderful segue to watch a little piece of this film. This is Notes on Blindness. A beautifully photographed film about losing one's sight. Absolutely compelling. Gentlemen, uh, tell folks where we can see screenings coming up here in the next few days. Yeah, so the premiere is um, on Sunday, 24th at 2.30 at the Egyptian, um, which I'm obviously very excited about. So uh, followed by um, screenings on Monday at Mountain Resort and Tuesday, I think back here at, at the Temple, um, and Wednesday in Salt Lake City, and then the following weekend. So yeah, it's kind of a, it's going to be a full week, I think. You have yeah. a, a full slate of activities. Yeah, Fantastic. Congratulations on your film. I hope that you have a wonderful Sundance Film Festival. Thank you for being here with us Thank at you, Park City Television, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much. Thank you, Thank fellows. You. Cheers. Quick break. We're continuing on. More films to discuss right after this.